video, we are going to start with the third kingdom, that is kingdom fungi. In the previous sessions, we had discussed about the first two kingdoms and also classifications of those kingdoms. That is the first kingdom, kingdom Monera, second kingdom, kingdom Protesta. Now, under the five kingdom of classification, we are going to start with the third kingdom, that is nothing but kingdom Fungi. Let me go through some basic general characteristics of uh, the members of fungi. The first general characteristic is they are achlorophilous heterotrophs. Let me see what is achlorophilous and what are heterotrophs. We know the meaning of the term heterotrophs. That means these fungi members are depending on other organisms or any other substances to derive their nutrition and that is what we are calling them as heterotrophs. If they are heterotrophs that means they are not able to produce their own food. Why they are not able to produce their own food? Because they do not consist of chlorophyll pigment. That is why we are using the word achlorophyllous. That means the chlorophyll pigment is absent in the members of fungi. We shall repeat the point. They are achlorophyllous heterotrophs. Under heterotrophs, we have differentiated into three. That is a parasitic form. That means these are harming the other organisms to derive nutrition. That is, we are calling them as parasites. Saprophytes. These fungi are deriving their nutrition from the dead and decaying substances or from the dead and decaying organic matter or many other uh, fecal matter like that from the dead substances or from the dead organic materials they are obtaining or deriving the nutrition and that means they are obtained from something other else that is why we are calling them as heterotrophs that is saprophytes and the third one is symbiotic association of uh, that we can see in fungi is symbiotic association means these some of the fungi will helpful for other organisms as well as they are receiving the nutrition from other organisms. That means there is a mutual exchange of benefits. Such type of fungi are called as symbiotic type of fungi. The fungi usually live in moist and the warm habitat. Usually they develop or they grow in the moist condition or else in the warm habitat. And that is a very favorable uh, regions for the fungi to develop. All the members are multicellular except yeast. This is a very exceptional case. Yeast is an exceptional case. Except yeast, all other members which belongs to fungi are multicellular which uh, and yeast except yeast which is a unicellular only yeast is a unicellular fungi this can also be asked for one marks so which is the unicellular fungi so that we can take example as yeast except yeast other all members which belongs to fungi are nothing but the multicellular in their organization, in their cellular organization. Next, we shall see the general characteristics. Next to general features, that is, the fungal body is called as mycelium. The fungal body is called as mycelium. And the mycelium or the body is made up of interoven structures called as hyphae. The 
body is made up of interwoven structures interwoven structures called hyphae and the hyphae may be septate or aseptate the hyphae may be septate or aseptate first of all here the body of the fungi is called as mycelium that point is clear next that mycelium or the body of fungi is made up of interwoven structures called as hyphae interwoven structures called as hyphae the hyphae may be septate or aseptate now let me write an structure here of rhizopus so let us consider this as an hyphae which is growing on an substratum which is growing on a substratum and this hyphae may be septate or aseptate what is the meaning of septate the hyphae consist of many nucleus the hyphae consist of many nucleus and in between the nucleus there is a presence of cross walls there is a presence of cross walls and that cross walls which are forming the chambers we call it as septa we call them as septa i'll repeat the point the hyphae consist of many nucleus that means there is a presence of many nuclei and in between those nuclei there is a presence of cross walls what i have mentioned here and those cross walls are called as septa and they are separating the nucleus and creating a separate chambers for each nucleus that is why we can take it as a septate hypha or hypha is septate that means the cross walls is present in the hypha that type of uh, hypha is are called as the hypha is are septate now what are a septate means here we shall take another hyphae we shall take another hyphae and in that hyphae also there are many nuclei numerous nucleus or many nuclei is present but here the septa or cross walls is absent there is absence of septa or absence of cross walls in the hyphae we call them as aseptate if the cross walls is there septate hyphae is septate if the cross walls is absent then we call it as the hyphae is aseptate here since uh, the hyphae in the hyphae there is absence of septa that the nucleus are randomly continuously arranged they are observing the multi nucleate con like condition and this type of aseptate hyphae this type of aseptate hyphae can be seen in the very primitive or lower fungi but in very developed uh, uh, fungi in the higher in the higher fungi we can observe this type of developed uh, septate hyphae this is about the septate and aseptate hyphae it's clear the hyphae which is having cross walls or septa are called as septate hyphae if the hyphae Uh, this not consist of cross walls between the nucleus and such type of hyphae are called as aseptate hyphae aseptate hyphae is cenocitic see 
aseptic hyphae. That means no cross walls. Cenocytic. What is cenocytic? That means they are multicellular in nature. And uh, the septic hyphae is acenocytic. That means uni or binucleated. This is not cellular. This is multinucleate condition. Multinucleate condition. See, when we take the aseptate hyphae, aseptate hyphae means no cross walls. Here there is no cross wall, the nucleus are present continuously and there is no chambers is present and that condition we call it as cenocytic hyphae. That is something but aseptic hyphae is cenocytic. That means the multinucleate condition. And the septate hyphae, septate hyphae means septa is present, cross wall is present. Such type of hyphae is acenocytic. That means there because of the presence of cross walls, a single cell or the unicellular or binucleated condition is present within these septa. There may be one nucleus or there may be presence of two nucleus. Maximum one or two nucleus is present within the septa or the cross walls. And that condition we call it as acenocytic. That means septate hyphae is acenocytic. Next, the cell wall of the fungi is made up of chitin. The cell wall of the fungi is made up of chitin and also of the polysaccharides. Since from the beginning, the first kingdom, we are speaking about the cell walls. Why we are specifying here is uh, many of the cell walls differentiate or they differ in their uh, uh, in their consistent what they are made up of that is here in the fungi the cell wall is made up of chitin but when we studied in bacteria their cell wall was made up of a different component when we uh, speak about protista there we did not find cell wall but here in the members of fungi the cell wall is present but that cell wall is made up of polysaccharide as well as the chitin as the component. Next, the mode of nutrition in fungi. We already come to know these fungi or the members of fungi are heterotrophs. That means they are not capable to produce their own food. Instead, they are depending on the other organisms. That is, the fungi are heterotrophs. And maybe parasites, saprophytes or symbiotic form. Parasites harming other organisms to derive nutrition. Saprophytes depending on dead and decaying organic substances. And symbiotic that is which are showing mutual benefits. And that we call it as symbiotic form. We have taken up the first that is parasitic fungi. They derive nutrition from other organisms. They harm other organisms and they obtain or derive their nutrition. Such type of fungi are called as parasitic fungi. Example, Puxenia. The second type of fungi is saprophytic fungi. These saprophytic fungi will derive nutrition from dead and decaying organic substances, dead and decaying organisms. When the organisms die, their dead body or the parts of those uh, dead organisms is eaten or it is consumed by the saprophytic fungi. Example is yeast. We can take the example as yeast. Next, the third type is symbiotic fungi. 
third type is symbiotic fungi as we said they live with a very close association with other organisms and derive nutrition they are closely associated with the other organisms to obtain their nutrition such all the fungi are called as symbiotic fungi example is lichens the association of algae like this thing but the association of algae and the fungi we call it as lichen how the lichen is formed that is nothing but the association or the combination of algae and the fungi is called as lichens and some fungi are found in the roots of higher plants to form the mycorrhiza higher fungi are found in the roots of the plants to form the mycorrhiza and here is a note regarding that that means these fungi that is one of the example that is nothing but edible fungi is mushroom we call it as basidio corp of agaricus is an example for edible fungi and the second one is second another note here is penicillium is a fungi which is used as synthesize during the synthesis of antibiotic the uh, third uh, fungi that is paxinia which is a parasitic form of fungi which causes wheat rust disease in wheat plants that means it is an parasitic form it is causing disease it is harming the plant and obtaining nutrition and another last point here is yeast is used to make bread and beer is also an uh, one of the very beneficial fungi in the manufacture of bread and beer reproduction in fungi how do the fungi reproduce the fungi usually repro uh, shows reproduction both by sexual type as well as the asexual type the fungi reproduces in three different processes that is one is vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction and the third one is the sexual reproduction how do they vegetatively reproduce the fungi shows vegetative reproduction it takes places by fragmentation or fission and budding that means if a fungi is there if a parental fungi is fragmented or it is divided into many pieces and each pieces can develop into a new individual fungi and that we call it as fragmentation method of vegetative reproduction the second one is fission that's nothing but split or break down and again those uh, small individual pieces of which is formed during the breakdown uh, that will develop into a new fungi that is fission and third one is budding type that means a small extension or uh, the small uh, baby fungi will develop on the parental body and it detaches after the development and falls on the substratum and develops into a new individual and that we call it as the budding method of reproduction in fungi when we speak about asexual reproduction it takes place by the formation of spores by the formation of spores this is very most important the asexual type of reproduction takes place by the formation of the spores called as conidiospores sporangiospores and zoospores that means we can observe 
the asexual type of reproduction is done or produced by the help of spores three different types of spores are produced by the fungi such as conidiospores sporangiospores and last one is the zoospores the third type of reproduction can be seen in fungi that is sexual type of reproduction the sexual type of reproduction takes places by the oospores and zygospores oospore is nothing but the the spore which is produced by the female hyphae and zygospore is nothing but produced by the male hyphae and that uh, the zygospore is nothing but formed by the fusion of these nuclei of the different hyphae the nucleus of different hyphae is fused to form the zygospore and the sexual reproduction takes place by oospores ascospores basidiospores etc various spores are produced inside the specialized structure which is called as fruiting body so what we can see here in sexual type of reproduction is in fungi the sexual type of reproduction is occurring or takes places by the production of oospores and various spores are produced inside the body of the fungi and the specialized structure the modified specialized structure which produces these spores